We're in Ephesians, the first chapter. This is the uh, 13th. 13th lesson. Now we're, we're at the point here where Paul's going to build on what he said. He's, he's, he grounded us in some eternal verities like the grace and peace come from God and all spiritual blessings that are laid up for us in heavenly places and God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world and he predestinated us into adoption see God's a hunting for sons and daughters and he, now he's going to build on it, he's going to reason on it And I'm interested in how, how Paul talks to these people. Like how do you talk to people that are well known for their faith and their love? Well, perhaps you don't know a lot of people that are well known for their faith and love. <laughs> but these people were, they are well known for their faith and their love. So how, if you were going to talk about the people, like, like how, what, what would you say? Well, let's say that you are, you're from the house of Chloe as a person in the church of Corinth. I don't know if it was a man or a woman. But the person talked to Paul about the church of Corinth. He, he didn't tell Paul that they, about their faith and their love. That's not what he talked about. He told them they were divided. And they weren't doing well. The point I'm making here is you don't talk about all people the same way. You got to talk about from what really is what really is there. And if you were, uh, and Paul was disappointed with them, and if you were talking about the Church of Galatia, well, Paul, he's he said, you've moved away. You've moved away from God and from he that called you to the grace of Christ and you've bought into another gospel. That's, all, that's what he had to say about them. And in the church at Colossae, they, they were some people that were philosophers. That is, they're just giving human ideas. They were trying to break into the church and so that's what he, he addressed that. So you see... Every church isn't assessed the same way. You have to have some kind of discernment. See, when you talk about the Lord to people, you have to have some kind of idea of where they're at. You have to know everything. Now, I'm not talking about the personal thing, about their personal lives. That's like none of your business. Stay out of that. But you have to know something about where they're at with God. Paul talked to the Athenians. They were philosophers. They did worship Grecian gods, they knew nothing about Christ. He didn't talk to them the same way he did at Jerusalem, say. It was different. The thing that makes a group unique is not the name that's on the door of their building. That's not what distinguishes them. It's their understanding of, the, of God and the things of God. It's that the Bible makes sense to them if they know what it's talking about. That's what identifies them what they really are. Some some people be deficient there, so the purpose is to bring them up to speed. Some people are sidetracked. They're on some bypass. Well, you got to get them right on the, on the right road because in the kingdom of God, you got to be on the right highway when you're teaching them. Amen. You have to be on the right road, headed in the right direction. You may not know much, but you have to be headed in the right direction. So he reasons with... Uh, with the Ephesians. Now first he laid the groundwork. He told them about things about God and things about Christ. He didn't talk about them for quite a while. He just talked about God, what God did, what Jesus did, how this whole thing was founded on. Now, you're not all that smart. It's God's the one that made the key decisions. You made a decision, but it wasn't like the main decision. The main decisions were made by God. The main work done by Christ. You've done some work, but the main work is done by Christ. So he, told, he tells them that first. Bill's on it. There's kind of a 
uh, kind of a holy logic that leads you to right conclusions. When you're thinking or reasoning or meditating or cogitating, as it says that Daniel did, cogitate is deep meditation. When you're doing that, you have to have, you got to be reasoning on the right basis. You have to have the right foundation. Yeah. See, if you're a Muslim, you, you have certain way, you think a certain way because of the basic components of your belief. Well, Paul has established that, and now he's going to reason from it, and he's going to tell the people what, it ha what has happened with them and what he desires for them. <clears throat> and we're going to be in the 15th to the 17th verses. Wherefore, <clears throat> by the wherefore, he just got through telling them they received the earnest of the Spirit, the earnest down payment of the Spirit, which is the down payment of our inheritance. And in view of the fact that they had received this, now he's going to tell them, now in view of that, here's, here's what I'm going to do. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That's, that's what we're going to deal with. Quite a, uh, quite a profound desire. I don't want you to stay the way you are. And they made some advancement. We're not talking about a bunch of backsliders. He said, I, I heard something about you folk. <clears throat> I heard something about you. I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love unto all the saints. All right, now, who do you know that that's what you heard about him? I'm not asking for an answer, but just think about it. Who do you know that what, you, what the talk about him is, their faith in the Lord Jesus, their love to all the saints? Well, I know some people like that, but like this isn't a common, <laughs> this isn't a common assessment. I heard about it, <coughs> which means their life. There's something about them in their life that testified to this. Yeah. Something about way they live, something about way they talked. It wasn't that they said, "I have faith in the Lord Jesus." It, it was their life that testified of it. Yeah. They were living this out. I heard about it. People talking about you down there in Ephesus, about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love to all the saints. So, what is faith in the Lord Jesus? Yes. I, I have known people over the years that I knew were walking with the Lord. But one of, the, one of the difficulties of our time is that people's thinking have, have not been rooted and grounded in their faith as their primary life, but rather the world as their primary life. Mm -hmm. And these mm -hmm. things become peripheral manners. Yeah. So you know them, and you know they love the Lord. You know they're faithful to uh, be with the Lord's people, but still... There is a push to know them after the flesh. So you, you th and I, I'm just in the church itself. The church itself, the mindset is not always yeah. to know one another after the faith. These brethren that we're reading about right here were separated by time and by space, but we are not separated in the in the fellowship of the Spirit. These people who are to us nameless in this earth are still all our brethren. Yeah. Amen. We, can't, yeah, yeah. we can't see these as Bible stories about other people. Uh -huh. We've got to see a connection with ourselves. That's and right. the realities yeah. of this being the primary part of our existence, mm -hmm. the eternal and everlasting part of our existence, rather than just knowing other people as what country and what family and, and what uh, mm -hmm. neighbors and what they do as a profession. That's all going to pass away. This is this is right up to date, right today. Yeah, uh, these amen. These people are on the other side waiting for us to get there too. Amen. Exactly what is faith 
in the Lord Jesus, right? See, it is good to make yourself think about these things. Well, what do I mean? What does this mean to say this? I'll give you a sample of what some of the other versions say. They're some of them pretty good. Your trust in the Lord Yeshua. That's the Jewish Bible. Belief in the Lord Jesus. The Message Bible says, Trust you have in the Master Jesus. In the Living Bible, reads, Strong faith in the Lord Jesus. So what faith is said to be the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrews 11. 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith in the Lord Jesus, you can't see Jesus. But you're more convinced of him than if you could see him. That's faith in the Lord Jesus. And associated with faith, the trust goes along with that. Dependence, reliance. In other words, even though you can't see him, you can't touch him, you can't prove he's there, you're depending on him. You're leaning on him. You do some things and you and you only reason you do it is because you're banking on the Lord protecting you and being with you, so even though you can't see him. See you hear about there's some people when they live to the world it looks like they're stupid. They do things that don't make sense to the world. But they're trusted in the they're trusted in the Lord Jesus, see? Well Brother Duane gave testimony of it. He prayed about it, he's trusting and he's looking for the what the Lord's going to do. Well, let's see. I heard about this. I heard about you, Ephesians. You had this faith in the Lord Jesus. You were dependent on him. See, people today in Christendom, people are dependent on other things. That's just the truth of the matter. Some people depend on some fellow that's an expert in raising money to teach him how to raise a lot of money for the new auditorium. They depend on that fellow. They give him a hundred thousand dollars to tell him how to collect money. I'm telling you the truth now. This is the way it is. And other people they go down to the bookstore and try and read one of these how-to books. I want to be a good husband. Well, you should be a good husband, a good wife. So they try and depend on some one of their peers, one of their, to tell them how to do this. Well, if you just have faith, Jesus will tell you how to do it. He'll be in his word and he won't say a lot of big sentences but he'll tell enough and you'll pick up on it. See, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is faith to take you to glory. Is faith to keep you in the world. Is faith to keep you from temptation. Or in the, What can you do about temptation? Huh? Can you stop temptation? I tell you, you can't. You have to say to the Lord, lead us not into temptation, Amen. see? So you trust the Lord, you stay out of places where you're tempted easy, and you depend on the Lord to, listen, if the Lord wasn't keeping you, you already today saw a thousand things could have thrown you off course if Jesus wasn't keeping you. But you had to trust in them. You had to, you had to lean on them, so to speak. Brother Griffin, it's highly questionable if whatever you're involved in doing, if it doesn't require trust in Christ, it's That's right. debatable whether you should even be doing it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus in uh, in Hebrews is called the captain of your salvation. The cap, the captain means salvation has a captain. Yeah, salvation has a captain. You're not like on your own. So what do you do with the captain? You depend on the captain to lead you. Steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. That's updated in, in Christ. That's old brag in the Proverbs. It is updated in Christ that God directs you. But the secret, the secret, is you got to be close. Now the scriptures tell us that his path is in the sea. Well, I can tell you, if you thought I'm going to follow a boat, I'm going to go where that boat goes, I'll follow it in the morning. Yeah, the wake is gone. You, you don't know where the 
You want to follow the Lord's path in the sea, you got to be right on the tail end of the boat. But see, people don't do that because they don't trust Christ. The one's got to call it the way it is. This is why it is. A person doesn't live close to God because they don't trust Him. They don't believe in Him. Well, they say, I believe there's a God. <laughs> so does Satan. In fact, he believes it more than you do. Huh? He believes there's one. That's what James said. The devils, the demons believe there's one God. They believe that. Strong. Why? They, you never hear a demon saying, who's God? Allah or the God? They know, they know who it is. But it doesn't do anything for them because they don't trust him. I heard about your faith in Christ Jesus. You trust. You trust him. And I heard about it, which means you cannot have faith and then not come out. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is impossible. If there's nothing coming out, there's nothing inside. Yeah, the good news we give people is, but you can get it inside. <laughs> it's a simple, simple illustration, but when you you squeeze a toothpaste tube, whatever's in that tube, what comes out, and when you have tribulation, what's in there comes out. <laughs> and some... I would venture to say some of our brothers and sisters even here tonight had no idea how favorable they'd react mm -hmm. when everything was taken from them. Yeah, right. Almost as like a surprise. Hey, I'm not bothered like I thought I was going to be. Yeah. Why not? Your faith yes. was holding you up. See, when you have faith in Christ that he puts his hands under mm -hmm. and carries you and pulls out. I heard about your faith over there in the Lord Jesus. He's very specific. And um, I heard about the love you have toward the folk that go to your church. Oh, I, toward all the saints. So you meet one. Some of you testified tonight. You meet one. You never met them before. You don't know them from Adam. You don't know them. I don't know. You resonate your heart, yeah, I love that person. You say, well, what do you know about it? Well, pretty well nothing. Yeah. All I know is I, they're there for the Lord and living for the Lord, and your love goes out to them. Yeah. It's like David said one time, they that fear the Lord will be glad when they see me. Yeah. Well, that's the truth. Yeah. I heard about your love toward all the saints. Yeah. Not toward your friends, toward the saints, yeah. the saints. Right. So who's the saints? <laughs> Saint means a holy one. Yeah. These are holy people. These are people living for God. That's who they are. There are people not living for the self. They're living for God. They're holy. They're separate from the world. And it's kind of obvious they're different from a worldly people. You love all those people that are separated from the world and their affection. They're separated from the world. You're kind of attracted to people like that. Maybe you've experienced this. You've uh, you visited some brothers or sisters you hadn't visited before, and they were they were out poor, and they didn't have much. They they lived in very simple conditions, and I've had this is the experiences I've had. And they're very simple because they didn't have anything. And when I'm in their home, they're like at per they're at peace all the time. I think, boy, I feel I feel strong when I'm here. And they got nothing, but they they have this attraction to the Lord. And if you're sensitive, you'll say, you know, they're further along than I am. I got all this stuff, but look, look how peaceful they are. And you're attracted to people like that. Whereas the world will look at people like that, and that's not what they see. They say, well, they dress weird, don't they? That's how the world looks at them. See, I heard about your love to all the saints. Love to all the saints is like you prefer one another. 
in honor, the scripture says, Romans 12, preferring one another. So I got this, I got this choice now. I got this choice before me. Today, tonight, at this time, I got this thing that I like to do and I can do it. But then I got this other where some member of Christ's body is doing something. And I say, I'm going to prefer to subject myself to that. Now you're, you're getting down, you're getting down to sensitive soil here, but in honor, prefer, that's what it means now. I got $10. I got something I can spend $10 on. This person over here, they don't, they're, they're, they don't, they're not having any luxury they need, but I'm going to prefer. That's loving all the saints. That's what it is. We got some widows. And uh, they, we, the church has to feed them if they're going to be fed. So Barnabas, he says, well, I, I got some property. I'm going to prefer the saints. I'm going to sell this piece of property. And I'm going to give it to the church to give to those widows. This is the proceeds to the widows. That's an honor preferring Amen. one another. Now, I, I can tell you, if you do this, it'll make you feel good. You'll feel gratified yeah. if you're living by faith and satisfied. Because didn't you remember what Jesus said, if you do it under one of the least, yeah. and some people when you do it, they aren't the least. Some of them are ranked pretty high. You do it to one of the least of these, my brother, and you're doing it to me. Yeah. Love to all the saints who represent Christ. The truth of the matter is, you don't know if you love Jesus or not unless you're attracted to his people. Amen. If you're not attracted to his people, you don't know for sure whether you love Jesus or not. Maybe you do. I'm not saying you don't, but you don't know it. That's how you know it. Jesus is fleshed out in the saints. He's in them. When you love them, that's your confirmation. You love him. Go ahead. Can we go so far as to say that people always do what they prefer? Yes, they do. Yeah. yeah. And we can also say in the end, everybody's going to get what they want. And won't, some people won't, will be sorry they wanted it, but they'll get what they want. Everybody's going to get what they want. So whatever desire you culture, it's going to be brought to maturity at the coming of the Lord. And boy, I don't want to be in a, I don't want to be in a state where I find out, boy, I want, let's use the slang word. I'm sorry I wanted the wrong thing. I was off base. You're, an instant that you're aware that Jesus is coming, your whole sense of values, they'll change. Brother Rick. Uh, first John, you know, John deals a lot with the love of the brother. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the things he said is, he said, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, now this is a legitimate brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? It's awful strong. Yeah, it's awful strong, isn't it? He says he doesn't know God, never did. Yes. Yeah. It's believing and obeying the truth, giving you the love for the brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now the saints of God, the children of God, can be liberal because they're not holding the things of the world tight. Yes, that's right. You think of Brother Job, he had to let go of everything he had. If he'd been hanging out like this, it, it, you couldn't handle it, see? You gotta hold it, you're a steward of it. Yes. But you gotta hold it light. So that just the slightest wind comes along, you're, you don't lose your soul hanging on to this thing and drifting out off base. Mm -hmm. Love all the saints, you love all the saints. See, these are people who are seeking a city whose builder and maker is God. They're, they don't feel at home in the world. The more worldly things they're submitted to, the more uncomfortable. I, I'm uncomfortable hearing certain kind of Christian music. It makes me uncomfortable. Called Christian music. Why? 
Yeah, it's just too much of the world in it. Yeah, too much. That kind of makes me feel uncomfortable because I'm just a stranger here. I'm journeying through it. So I'd like you to sing something that makes it easy for me to think about the homeland. Don't be a moaning and groaning when you sing about glory. So what does a person who is living by faith do when he confronts people like this that are strangers and pilgrims and they're not at home? His heart goes out to them. He loves them. I heard about you brethren in Ephesians. All right, so what do you do when you hear about them like that? Well, somebody says, oh, take them off the prayer list. They're doing all right now. Well, that's what you hear. They haven't the put them on a prayer list. Things are going bad now. All right, everything's okay now. Take them off. Everything's okay. Paul puts them on. That's right. He did, did he? Yeah. That's what he did. He put them on the list. Yeah. Why? Because those are the people Satan's targeting. Uh -huh. yeah. Those that fear God and keep His commandments. That's how stated in Revelation 12. That's who he targets. People. That Love God, believe on Christ, and keeping His commandments. Satan targets them. So when you see people like this, you think, "Oh, I'm glad I saw them." But Satan saw them too. If if they're doing well, they're certainly in a position to do better. Yeah. Oh, and good. Yes. Amen. 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 That's kind of a kingdom mentality, isn't it? That you're doing well, you don't say, "Well, I've arrived." You say, "I can do better." And the best is still ahead. No matter how far you've come, the best is yet ahead. You, you look around at the, at the best, you're just on the porch. You're not in the house yet. If you look around, you say, well, the, the, the real stuff is up there. Uh, yep. We'll just get some sampling. The increasing stance is the nature of the Amen. Yeah. Amen. The nature of Say walking it. in the faith and the truth. You just increase larger, yeah. more, larger, more. Would you say that the path of the just goes brighter and brighter? Amen. And the perfect day. Yes. All right, here's these people growing. What are you going to, what are you going to do, Paul? Well, I cease not to give thanks for you. Now, you don't thank God for what the other guy did. Mm -hmm. right? right? You thank God for what he did. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if he did it through somebody else, all right, we, under, we understand that. I thank God about every remembrance of you. But see, it's, when you give thanks, God's been in the thing somewhere. God's been in the process. That's why you're thanking him. I give thanks for you. That's what you do. Well, what, what exactly do you do if you hear about someone that has faith? We've heard here tonight about some people who had faith. And for, there was thanks. Mm -hmm. But that's what you do. You give thanks. Yeah. In fact, he says, I cease not. I mean, I don't stop giving thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. since, since I heard about it, I've been giving thanks. Yeah, okay. That you uh, have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love toward all saints. That's a certain characteristic of the new creation. This is how, when you're born again, this is the kind of nature you have. You're so thankful when you hear about someone that has faith in Christ and loves all the saints. Oh, thank God for them. Ah, they're salt of the salt of the earth and the light of the world. God's a-keeping the earth because of them. He is. The earth would have been gone a long time ago if it wasn't for these people. They're the ones that God looks at. I cease... I don't cease to pray for you. That is some verse. I, I give praise without end. I just, just, I'm always thanking God. I think this is a good thing to culture, giving thanks for people that have faith in Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, and love all the saints. Just to thank God for them. And kind of let them know you appreciate them. It's good to, it'll mean something to them. You, step, you know, I, I really appreciate your faith. Amen. You're probably like me. You've got your bad points, weak points, but I, I am, I am thankful for you, brother Tony. You're gonna to say something. I love it. I love it.
the brethren, or he says saints here, yeah. loving the saints and, and thanking God for this an expression of the mutual faith. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not a law. Amen. There's not a law here, but Amen. this is your natural response. Yeah. That's good. When you meet brethren, because yeah. you've benefited. That's right. That's and right. when you benefit from them, you're given thanks. Amen. It's just what you do. Amen. Mm -hmm. now, if your faith commends you to God, wouldn't it stand to reason it would commend you to your brother? That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> See, the new covenant, I give thanks for you. Because what they have is it's not going to like stay in that measure. Because it's the nature of the kingdom of God to grow. You remember in Isaiah 9, it said, of, To you a child is born, to you a son is given, his name should be wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. See, so when you see this faith, you know this is not static. It just doesn't stay the same size. So I'm giving thanks. He's going to make a request for me because it's the nature of the kingdom to expand and grow. If you planted a seed and the plant was always this, was this high, You'd say, you know, something's wrong here. I planted some corn and the stalk is a one inch high and it's not getting any higher. There's some one inch Christians. There are. It's all taller they are. They have, just haven't grown. It's hard to give thanks for people like that. Because their faith is weak because faith doesn't let you stay a midget. Not faith. Amen. So when you see this, you, you begin to pray, give thanks. And you're giving thanks, and you're going to say some other things, because you want, not only do you appreciate what they have, you know that they're in a process of enlargement, growing brighter, growing nearer, going further, getting more like Christ, being conformed more to his image. They're in that process, yeah. and God's the one that's doing it. Yeah. You, know, you, you give thanks. Yeah, but some people are only one inch because no one's ever <laughs> ministered to them. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. Oh, on a day of judgment, see, these people that didn't bring anything to feed the saints, they're going to face the head of the church. Huh? The head of the church. And he's going to say, why didn't you feed my sheep? I told you to do it. Feed my sheep. I told you to do it. They aren't going to have any answer for this. And he's not going to say, welcome to my abode, thou faithless one. He's not going to say that at all. Go ahead. Yes, um, yes this is I can uh, give testimony to the group that meet at my home on a regular basis that when our meeting is finished, which I tell everyone, we're not going to have a one-hour meeting. We go until we're finished because after we <laughs> listen to the sermon, during the sermon, we take notes, yeah. and then we discuss all these things. Then we have the Lord's table, and then we dismiss. And sometimes we're getting out about the same time you do. There is an hour difference in the time. But we always faithfully, no matter who closes with prayer, praise for all of you here, because yeah, it's your you. work here that we listen to that helps sustain us. Yeah. And we especially want you, brethren, to continue so that we will continue to grow as yeah. well. We want you to continue too. Yeah. See, that, that's good. That's a good word. Good word to remember. Giving thanks is the manner of the kingdom too. Yeah. And the, man, the, the way that the body works together to encourage one another. Anyone who's ever spoken before, you know, you've had an experience where you may not think you you had you had done so well, and and another brother comes up to you and tells you, "Why? Well, I, I really appreciated your message." I thought, yeah. you know, and, and it kind of spurs you on. It encourages yeah. you to be able to to press on and to Amen. do more. Yeah, you, you won't make anybody proud. It's living by faith. If you say how much you appreciate their faith, Amen. In fact, you'll humble them. Yes. Didn't it humble you? Yes. It's the man of the kingdom, too. I give thanks now for you having heard about it. Well, this tells you a little about what they talked about in those days. Huh? And you say, we heard about those new pews you got. Well, I guess they must really be comfortable. 
We heard about your new building. Oh, it sounds wonderful, commodious. You don't hear anything. You don't read anything like that in the scripture. I mean, I'm thankful for comfortable seats and things like this. Don't get me wrong. But it's the people that they gave thanks for, not the uh, facilities. <laughs> and uh, in my prayers, I... I mention you in my prayers. M mention? Remember how Jesus mentioned his disciples in his prayer in Gethsemane? How often he mentioned his disciples? And he mentioned people who believe on him through their word. He mentioned. It isn't just say he just like mentioned the name and that was it. He, when he mentioned them in his prayers, he's reasoning with God. Uh, I mention you in my prayers. Boy, if someone remembers me in their prayers, I'd love to hear it was like Paul. I mean, it's, <laughs> that'd be a good thing to think about, wouldn't it? Amen. If there's some really godly person you look up to, they benefited you and you hear they're praying for you, that, that means a little something extra, extra to you. Paul knew that too, is why he told him. He didn't keep this secret. I make mention of you in my prayers. And, <laughs> He didn't say when I pray, he said my prayers, because praying, that's the mode of the kingdom. Those who live by faith, they like pray. It's just like what they do. It isn't that they ought to pray, this is what they do. Yes, right? Amen. And in the process of the inclination of his heart toward God, in that process, when he's in God's presence, he thinks about these people. <laughs> Now, when I'll be perfectly honest with you, sometimes when I'm in God's presence, there's some people I forget. And I'm glad to do so. You've experienced this, haven't you? There's other people that come to your mind. Why? Because these are the people God's thinking about. That's why. God's thinking about them. And when you're in prayer, bowing your knee to them, you're praying, He's sharing His thoughts with you. And so you... Oh, yeah, I mentioned them. Remember the time Jesus mentioned Peter in his prayer? He said to Peter, he says, Oh, Simon, Simon, Satan's desired you to sift you like wheat, but I, I'll substitute a word here, but I mentioned this to the Father. I pray that your faith wouldn't fail. And it didn't. He was denied Christ three times. Yeah, he repented the very night. It didn't take a word, it took a look. Just a look, just a look. That's all it took, just a look. And he got back on course. Why? Because Jesus had mentioned him yes, to the Father. <laughs> oh, boy, that's good stuff. I made mention of you in my prayers. Remember, Paul said, now, pray without ceasing. This doesn't mean like you all day long you say, I'm going to pray. That's not what it means. It's what we call importunity. It means when you take up a matter with God, don't drop it till something, till it's resolved some way. Don't drop it till, until God says, no, I'm not going to take the thorn away. My grace is efficient. All right, that's, that was the end of asking for the thorn to be removed. And pray without, that's what prayer without ceasing means. Men are always to pray and not to faint. That was after he told that parable about the woman who went to the judge and she just kept on coming until he finally did what she wanted. Don't give up. Particularly when you're praying for saints, if you're praying about me, don't give up. Don't give up. You may say, oh, Brother Gibbon, he's, he could sure, he's on the decline. He should, could sure do a lot better. Don't, don't give up. Keep, keep praying. I mention in my prayers, not occasional, all the time. For some, prayer is always something personal. Yes. They tune up by saying, me, 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 me. They just, they, they really, the only time they really pray is when they, oh, that's right. yeah. they need something. Paul says, well, when I'm praying, I mention you yeah. in my prayers. He thought, of, in other words, he thought of them like in a parental sense. It wasn't like friends or something like that. A lot of these people were coming to the kingdom through his labors. Mm -hmm. And he, he had a real interest 
in them making it all the way and being able to finish the course. You do, I mean, if you've labored with someone, you have this desire. Sometimes you'll be frustrated because it doesn't look like it's working. Mother Jean knows what I'm talking about here, but you have this desire that the people will finish the course and be, a, be to the praise of God's glory. So I uh, make mention of in my prayers. For some people, the best thing they can pray for is that I pray that everything will work out for me. Why don't you let us pray that for you? Why, why don't you let us pray that everything will work out for you, and then you pray that everything will work out for us? <laughs> well, which one is better? We've got about 50 people here. Which is best, for you, one person, or for you to have 50 people praying for you? See, it's the best way. It really is. Yes, go ahead. happened to me over at the Don DeWell Center. Their brother, now this was, a, to me, it was a miracle. That I was thinking I would like to call Brother Tom and ask him if he would do your series. I thought, you know, that would be kind of presumptuous, and I didn't even know the man. I never met him. And so, but I had been praying about this, and that pulpit thing came up. And now, in the perfect opportunity, the Lord created it, and He asked me, "Is there anything I can do for you?" Yeah. And I thought, "Oh, this is the Lord. This is it." Yes. And so, but see, He He opened that up, and then all I had to do was say, "Well, I was thinking of Brother Green." He said, "Well, I'm forward to do that." He already was thinking about it. <laughs> Now, how could you do put these things together? The Lord worked That's this right. whole thing out. Amen. And so as you sense, there will be times in your prayers you'll sense you're closer to God. You'll sense, yeah, yeah. ask then. That's right. Ask then. That's right. Yeah, when you, yeah, that's a good point. That When you're more sensitive to God, then it's when you get on to business with some things that are difficult, yeah. have been difficult for you, see. Mm -hmm. Then... When you're on the mountain like Moses was, then he brings this up about Israel. Yes. I don't let the enemy hear about it. He said that on the mountain when he's close to God. Some people don't know this. And some teach, some teach God's people, maybe you'll be able to fall down on the ground and wallow around and talk in a language you don't understand. you really been blessed then. Well, see, that's open to question. Quite frankly... You could say, hello down there. Did you recall any of the saints of God while you're wallowing down there? None of them would say, yeah, matter of fact, I was. They were thinking about themselves. Now he says, here's while I'm praying, mention you. I'm praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, see that's, how do you want to think on that? The God of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, that's a marvelous, uh, marvelous thing. What does that mean? It means as the man, Christ Jesus, he's the glorified man. The man, Christ Jesus, God, he's trusted in God himself. When he was on earth, he trusted God the same way you have to trust in God. When he went through temptation, he had to trust in God. And God was his God. In fact, Jesus talked that way. He said, uh, Behold, I go to my God. My God. And your God. And this phrase, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, is mentioned in Scripture. Both Paul and Peter both mention this. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ. This has special significance to us. Jesus is above you. He's exalted above you. He's not your peer or equal, not at all. Mm -hmm. But he's like us. Yeah. Uh -huh. In that he has passed through this domain. Mm -hmm. See? And he was tempted mm -hmm. while he went through here. And he confronted the devil while he went through here. He came out of the other end totally victorious. And he... He'll teach you how to do it. Amen. He'll give you what he had, what made him successful. He'll give you, and you'll be just as successful as he was to the extent that you rely upon him. Amen. See? The God of our Lord Jesus Christ.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He mentions that several places, 2 Corinthians and Ephesians. Peter mentioned it too, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's amazing how God identifies himself with peop certain people. Yes, Brother Ricky. Here's an example of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> Paul's confidence in coming near to God was based on his awareness that his favor that God's favor toward him was based on his association with Christ Jesus. Yes. So he comes with a conscious awareness of Christ. That's what gives him the confidence to draw near to God mm -hmm. and to know that he'll be heard. Amen. It is, it is a resting phrase. It, it's profitable to think about it. Amen. See, God is overall, even he's even over Christ. You say, well, I thought they were equals. They were. But Jesus emptied himself. Huh? Yes. He consented to be in this position where he had to obey God, do God's will. That's what it took to save you. Yes. Amen. Somebody had to do this. It was Jesus did it. And then when he delivers up the kingdom to God, 1 Corinthians 15, 27 says, He himself will be subject to the Father, that God may be all in all. Now, he wasn't subject to the Father before. That's right. That's something he stepped down, not out of godhood. He didn't step out of godhood. Yeah, right. He's still, he, he still eternal and God and divine. He's all of that. Mm -hmm. But he stepped down so you could step in. Because yeah, yeah, right. you had to have somebody with you uh -huh. when you stand before God and when you work with God. You've got to have somebody bigger, greater than you, with you, even in the glory. Yes. Amen. And so Jesus, he's, he consented to be the one, but he had to step down. So if he asked you to humble yourself and prefer the brethren, I mean, you should complain about that yeah. after what Jesus, <laughs> Jesus did, God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, that means he's going to have a special attention to what Paul says. God is called the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of David, the God of Hezekiah, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the God of Daniel. Oh, wouldn't you like to be known as the God of and insert your name? Wouldn't you like that to be said of you? Well, it can in Christ. Maybe he said that in the heavenly chambers of the God of mm -hmm. so called. Why? Because this person was close to God, being conformed to God. He is trusting in God, see? And God was not ashamed to call him his son, and Jesus was not ashamed to call him brother. The Father, the Father of glory? I'm praying now that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's the Father of glory, what is glory? Glory is what God makes known of himself. The glory of God, like the rays of the sun, is what God makes known about himself. The Father of glory is the Father that reveals himself, in other words. That's the God we're talking about. Well, here's something Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar. There is a God in heaven that revealeth. There is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets. That's God's manner. This will be made known. Amos said, Amos 3, 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So before God's going to do something on earth, he tells somebody to tell the people. Watch for this. I'm going to send my son. All right, Isaiah, tell him. I'm going to give him a child and give him a son. Tell him. That's God's manner. He's the father of glory. He's a father that reveals himself. So if, you, if a person has a God that's like secret, mystical, you don't know anything about him, that's not, that's not the God and father of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's another God. This is a God that makes himself known. As the prophet said, they shall all be taught by God. Why, he's a father of glory. He's a father that, this is nature. You get, you get close enough to God, and God will tell you about himself. Now, I know he'll, he'll work through Scripture. This is how he works. 
And you, pretty soon you'll be able to read scripture and you'll say, oh, it'll clear up who God is. Oh, he's full of mercy. That's, he's full of mercy and I need mercy. Well, it's good to know when you need mercy, he's full of mercy, see? And he's disposed to tell you that. To the Father of glory. What, what are you going to tell the Father of glory, Paul? What kind of request are you going to make from him? Well, I'm going to pray that he give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Well, you already heard about us. I mean, we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and we love all the saints. Yeah, well, that's not enough, brother. I'm going to pray that you get that God to give you the spirit of wisdom. That's a capital S spirit. Spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. <clears throat> uh, what is wisdom? Wisdom is you know what to do with the knowledge. Knowledge would be you read the book about architecture, wisdom you could build a house. Yeah. <laughs> There's a difference. Knowledge is you know what the God tells you to do. Wisdom is you know how to do it. Do you know how to do it? But already, I, I could probably name a lot, go one by one with you and tell you what I know you know how to do it. Why? Because you got the spirit of wisdom. It's not enough just to know what you ought to do or you got to know how to do it. That's where God comes in. Spirit of wisdom, and that's something God gives to men. Let's read it again. That, God, that he would give you, that he would give you the spirit of wisdom. Remember the children of Issachar, there were men in Issachar, tribe of Issachar. They had understanding of the times. To know what Israel should do. All right? There are certain times where certain things need to be done. As you end toward the end times, it's high time to wake up. Awake out of sleep. It's high time to awake. You, you got to know what to do. If there's a time when God's about to pour out a judgment, if God, maybe God did give certain people in Joplin a sense that a tornado was on. I don't know, maybe he did. But if he did, you better prepare for it. Yeah. That's wisdom. Getting ready for it. Now, he's told you he's coming again. He's told you when he comes, the earth's going up in fire. He's told you. The elements are going to melt with the fervent heat. Heavens and earth are going to pass away. Dead are all going to be raised. Everybody's going to stand before God. Now, if that's all you knew, Wisdom will tell you how to get ready for that because you are going to be there. Yeah. I'm praying God give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him. You remember God, the, it's the Holy Spirit gives you this. Spirit of wisdom isn't like, like an attitude of wisdom. That's not what spirit of wisdom doesn't mean that. It means the spirit is the one that brings the wisdom. For instance, in 1 Corinthians 2.9, he says, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them that love him. But, yeah. but, God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Amen. Yeah. It's a spirit of wisdom and revelation, see? He's unveiled it to you. If you can see what God has waiting for you, you'll be willing to invest your life. Yeah. Why isn't a person willing to, ungodly, to live godly, separate from the world? Because they're not convinced of what God's prepared, or maybe they don't even know about it. Maybe they, they don't have any idea that God's prepared anything for them that love him. But he has, and it, it's so great that man can't cook it up. Man couldn't think this up. Right. And once the Spirit shows it to you, hey, you'll pay the price. Yeah. You do think I wouldn't care what men think if I can get what God's prepared for them to love him? Yeah. See, that's, I'm praying you get the spirit of wisdom and revelation, see. <laughs> yes. Very satisfying. I recall <laughs> Brother Ricky just the other day being so excited about the time that he had with the Lord and things being revealed to him. He's like, there's yeah. nothing better. Yeah. Well, there really isn't. No. There, there's just nothing better. <laughs> Amen. 
You can all see this, I'm sure. I won't labor on it anymore. But in the knowledge of him. Well, this is revealed in the knowledge of him, which means you know him. All right, sister, this is Judah and I have been married, what is it, 31 years, son? Huh? Yeah. I found out, it just, it just had my wedding anniversary, I found out about. And um, <laughs> so we've been married 31 years. Is it 31 or 32? Well, anyway, see, I, if you want to know some things about June, like, I could tell you. I know her. So you can say, what kind of a food, kind of like a food she likes a lot? I could, I could tell you. I know her. See, I know her. What kind of a drink does she like? I can tell you. How does she like her coffee? Yeah, I know. I can tell you. I know her. All right. When you have this knowledge of him, you begin to know what God's like. And you begin to, someone will say, what do you think? Think God will approve of that? You say, ah, I feel uncomfortable with that. I don't think God will do that. What is that? You're knowing God. You've got a working acquaintance with God. The less you know God, the more you slop around in your life. It's just a natural consequence. Now, these are people that were pretty disciplined in the faith. They loved the Lord Jesus Christ. They loved all the saints of God. Now, Paul knows now we've got to, we can't stay in elementary school. We've got to get out up here to high school and get ready for the glory. So I'm praying for the next course. I'm praying that you, God will give you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him. So now it's not going to be a matter of reciting the alphabet and reciting the multiplication tables. Now you'll be able to write with those letters and you'll be able to count with those numbers so you'll be able to work with what you know. That's the spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge of him. God's able to teach you so everything makes sense. So if someone says, be ye holy as I am holy. You see, I can, I can see that. I can see that. I can see that God's not about to live with somebody that's unholy. Amen. It'll make sense to you. What is that? That's the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And it's like an unending process. I think I'll close there, but you can see what a pregnant text that is, huh? And here's a, we don't give assignments, but this would make a good assignment. Find somebody to pray that for. Like even think tonight of somebody you can pray that, that for. And then do it. Uh, who knows what the outcome may be. <laughs> but that's how, I, this is what I wanted you to see, brother, and I, I want you to see how a holy man reacts to people that have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love toward all saints. This is how he reacts. Amen. Amen. See, and what a deliverance. Oh, this praise yeah. God. Uh -huh. This is a deliverance when the only time you pray is not when there's trouble. This is like, this is like a, de a deliverance. In fact, you say, boy, I'm glad there's no trouble now. I can get on to praying what I what I really want here. Maybe your children, or there's a lot of people it could be. You pray this for them. And the moment you see some of these spiritual traits begin to surface, get to praying right then about that. So they don't stay in a static condition for like, see some of us, I know, I was at the same, some of us were in the same position for like a long, kind of a long time. Maybe there were people that saw that were praying, well, Lord, <laughs> Move them on. Give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But whether you know they did it for you or not, make this, make this a quest. As soon as you see somebody's got faith in Christ, now get down to business with the real meat of the thing. Pray that God will give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. Then the next verse, he's going he's to break that down for us. But it's marvelous. What is all this? This is the way God strengthens his people. He does it through Christ, but Jesus does it through his body. Jesus, you have it in the book of the Revelation. God said in the first chapter, God gave Jesus a message. 
Jesus gave an angel the message, and the angel gave John the message, and then John wrote to the churches. That's still the way it works. God gives Jesus something. Jesus says, in this case, to the Holy Spirit, but go down and give that to that brother so he can execute this facet of my, my wisdom. When you're depending on God to do things, he generally will do it through somebody. He's not locked into that, I understand, but he'll, he'll generally do it through somebody, and there's no reason why it can't be you. <laughs> Any rest of you have something you'd like to say before we close? Yes, Sister Tasha. I was um, considering when you were laboring the point of the love that the saints had, and to all the saints, what joy this brings to the Father to be able to see those whom he has invested so much in preferring yeah. one another. Yeah. And we can see this in a shadow in our own children, yeah. how when they're, they're thoughtful of one another, they're not quick to be angry, but they love, they prefer one another. Yeah. And um, in fact, the Lord has, has put so much weight in this that he gives us this token that we know that we pass from death into life because, because. we love the brethren. Mm -hmm. And so we see we see the nature of, of God in one another yeah. and it causes us to prefer one Amen. Another. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sometime just kind of think this out. What if Paul had not had this kind of a heart? Think how much of the Bible we wouldn't have. Think how little we would know if God hadn't showed Paul something and Paul showed it, think how little you'd know if that didn't happen. Yeah. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're very grateful for the way you work. We confess you're righteous and that you're full of mercy. We thank you that you've worked among us. Pray that you continue to do so, to give all who love the Lord Jesus Christ and have love for all the saints. Father, give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of yourself. In Jesus' name, amen.